SBC Media. Welcome to iGaming Daily, analysing the news from the betting and gaming industry all over the globe. Supported by SBC Summit Latino America, bringing together the leadership teams and product specialists from retail and online operators in Latin American markets. Discover the potential of Latin America's booming iGaming and sports betting markets at SBC Summit Latin America, the premier industry event in the region. Join SPC at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Miami from October 31st to November the 2nd. Register now at spcevents.com. As the third quarter report season gets underway, operators across the globe are putting the final touches on their Q3 reports. One of these firms is Betson, who just this morning published their operational results for the period of July to September 2023, which showed new record numbers and the seventh quarter in a row with sequential growth in revenue and earnings. Joining me, Connor Porter, senior journalist for Casino Beats, to dig deeper into Betson's performance is the company's president and CEO, Pontus Lindwall. Thank you, Pontus, for taking the time to talk to us today about Betson Group's free uh, Q3 results. Uh, first of all, in your own words, could you give us a brief outline of how the third quarter has gone for Betson and what has been achieved in the quarter as well. Yeah, it's a strong quarter. I'm very happy with the outcome. Uh, it's our best quarter ever and it's uh, the seventh time in a row when we post uh, new record figures. So we're on a strong move right now. Um, we have managed to perform a strong quarter with strong revenue and profit and at the same time we have done some strategic moves like getting bet first up up and running in our books from the third quarter and also uh, yeah we have now presented that we have received a, a, a license in in France which obviously happened after the quarter but still that work was done partly in, in the third quarter so we've done some some other work as well uh, making sure that we can have even more revenues in, in the future. Fantastic. And we'll talk more about uh, the Bet First in Belgium and the, the France news as well uh, in just a moment. But I want to touch a little bit on uh, Latin, to, Latin America to begin with. 22% uh, of the group's revenue in the third quarter. Um, can you give us a breakdown of these operations and what prospects do you think the region holds for bets and uh, for the remainder of the year and into 2024 as well? Yeah, we had the nice growth in the region and uh, we've been eyeing that region for a very long time and doing work there for, for some time as well. And uh, quite a good part of our marketing investment goes into that region. Uh, we believe that it, it, it has a huge potential going forward and that we are only in the beginning of what we can see there. So we continue to struggle on there with more investments and, and also as you all know the region is going into local regulation country by country uh, so it's, it's it's happening for real over there. Certainly and with the, the possibility of Brazil being regulated uh, potentially by the end of the year or so uh, how do you view the overall Latin American market changing within the next couple of months because that Brazil regulation could play a huge impact on the region. Yeah, it, it it could. It's that, that country, of course, being enormous uh, itself, uh, and unfortunately, we have been waiting for that uh, regulation too long already. But uh, l let's hope now that it happens and uh, and that we can kick off more uh, more in in that market. And throughout twenty twenty three, we have seen some regulatory uh, turbulence across a few European markets. Uh, how has Betson worked to keep its business adaptable and resilient against uh, any headwinds that it's faced uh, throughout Europe this uh, quarter? Yeah, we've seen some problems. And one that deserves to be mentioned maybe is Germany, but it, it didn't happen uh, just recently, but uh, it's now a few years ago. But th that's a typical example of headwinds that have push the regulated part of the market out of the country and opens up the, the doors for the uh, non-regulated business. And that's very sad to see. 
Uh, in the case of Betson, I'm happy that we are really diversified and we have revenue streams from many, many different markets. So uh, w when we run into problems like in Germany, we're happy to have many, many other markets that cover up for it. But it's 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 unlikely to see that, and and we would rather see uh, lawmakers cooperating with the gaming companies and understanding how to regulate to keep the market inside of the regulation. Yeah, and within your uh, UQ3 report, you mentioned that you've seen revenue growth in all major regions except for the Nordic. So uh, I particularly wanted to take a, a, a closer look at that. Um, it's it's presented a few problems for you in that region, the Nordics. Can you explain the reasons for this and what plans the company has in place uh, to rebound in that region uh, looking forward? Yeah. Uh, I, I think you refer mainly to, to Norway and, and Finland, whereas in Norway we don't have a, an offering any, anymore for, for uh, in Norwegian. So, so we would hope to see regulation coming up there and opening up for licensing but it's not on the agenda as it seems which is very unfortunate uh, in Finland it's a different case where where uh, uh, the market is pretty much in standstill but it's up for regulation and the lawmakers are are, are, are working on it so we hope that 2026 it will open up and be an open regulated market next to Denmark and Sweden who which are the other two markets and that are doing pretty well, actually. Yeah, certainly in Finland with the, the recent uh, government uh, launch of a uh, of a project looking into the licensing, it could be very promising for Betson in the future. Um, taking a look into Serbia, your brand went live there uh, uh, this year. Uh, what's the significant have, how, what significance of, of this uh, launch in Serbia has been for the group's overall European profile Um particularly as we moved on further into the year, into Q3 and now into approaching Q4. Yeah, we opened up in Serbia and uh, it's, uh, uh, it, 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 it start from zero there as well. So it, it's, it's not the, it's not very big impact on our revenue so far, but we have seen success in other markets with the brand and with that technology, we operate on the risk brand there. So we believe that to, we are uh, on a good platform to 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 be successful there. So so over time, we hope to to build up a decent uh, revenue in Serbia. And certainly, one of the ways that Betsa will be looking to gain attention in the market will be part of their global advertising campaign. Uh, a bet makes the difference, which launched back in August. Uh, how significant has this campaign been so far for uh, the company's growth so far, uh, Ponson? Um, it's uh, we have just started to roll that one out. I've seen it myself on TV here in Sweden, and uh, uh, it, it's it's good that we have a global marketing campaign. It, it gives us uh, economy of scale, and and uh, we try to build the bets on brand to to global brand, and and that will of course be, you know, underpinned by this marketing campaign. And. Um Within the financial statement, you mentioned about uh, B2B operations uh, being a core part of the strategic direction of Betson. Um, can you elaborate a bit more on this for us? And are there any potential markets that you see as having the most potential for this? And uh, what uh, what will uh, a B2B arm complement? Um, uh, sorry, how will a B2B arm complement your uh, B2C operations in, in the future? Yes, so it will. The idea with our B2B offering is that we have a lot of technology that we have in-house and that we have built ourselves and we have taken quite big investments in this technology. And uh, if we can use this technology uh, to, to license it to third parties, it helps our revenue and it pays back on the investments that we have done. So, so that's the strategy behind it. We have a few uh, partners up and running on, on the technology and the most recent one being Beth Hard opened up on our sports book uh, and uh, doing well so far. So we hope that there is more to come. And certainly you got, you've had uh, just added in here, there's a strategic partnership in, in France as well. Um, what what kind of future are you expecting to develop there in, in France with, with that strategic partnership with... Um, uh, group uh, 
Parche, I think it was. Um, Parche, yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it remains to be seen. Uh, now we have opened up uh, the sports betting. Uh, no, we have not, but we have received the license and we are about to open up the sports betting, hopefully in the fourth quarter. Um, and then uh, we'll see what the market offers in terms of potential casino regulation in, in the future. But obviously France being a large market, uh, it, it's, it's an interesting one. Uh, not too many licenses in in the sports betting side that are up and running. So so we, we'll see what what we can achieve there. And I'll add on to this: you recently issued uh, a seventy five million euro uh, bond to support your strategic plans. You know, without giving too much away, because I know you want to uh, not not spoil it all for us. Um, but what can we expect from Betson regarding its uh, M and A and geographic expansion uh, with this bond? Yes, we have a strong balance sheet and we had that already before the bond, but with the bond we've become even stronger. So now we have quite some firepower so that we can make acquisitions. And uh, the most recent larger one was Bet First and uh, we're going to continue to to look at strategic opportunities to, to acquire operators and potentially technology uh so there, there's more to come, I guess. Fantastic. And final question, just away from your Q3 results, um, Betson Group is going to be a bronze headline sponsor at next week's SBC Summit uh, Latino America event in Miami. Um, Pontus, what are you hoping to achieve and take away from this event uh, with SBC in Miami? I, I think uh, that uh, show will be quite interesting for, for the last um, part of our business so I hope that it, it will help us to cement our position in the Latin market e- even further Fantastic, thank you very much for your time Pontus today, it's been a pleasure speaking to you Thank you, bye bye To read more on Betson's Q3 results I'll leave the links in the description below of write-ups from Casino Beats and SBC News. Pontus, thank you again for joining us and to our listeners out there tune in tomorrow for more from iGaming Daily Thank you for listening to today's episode of iGaming Daily, brought to you in conjunction with SBC Summit Latino America, being held at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Miami on the 31st of October to the 2nd of November. If you want to find out more about some of the subjects raised today, feel free to explore any of the sites in the SBC News Network. Happy reading.